I want to introduce everybody to this amazing panel that we have today. We're here to talk about band longevity, how you keep a band together for a long time, how you have a long, sustainable career, and things, that, decisions that you're making early on in order to make that possible. So let me uh, go around and introduce you to the people who have joined us. Uh, first, I want to start with Metal Blades founder Brian Slagle, uh, metal icon, uh, first round heavy metal Hall of Fame inductee, Brian Slagle. So, Brian, thank you for joining us. It's a, it's an absolute honor. Tim McDave from uh, Under Oath, uh, uh, one of the greatest bands in metal, in music today, uh, owner of my album of the year for 2018. So I'm really glad that you are here. Uh, I got Tim Bohr here from Sound Talent Group. Uh, booking agent, correct, Tim? That is correct. Excellent. And I've got, uh, let's see, Biggie, uh, one of the founders of Good Fight Entertainment, manager and uh, extraordinaire. And I've got Mike Mowry, manager of Ice Nine Kills uh, from 10th Street Entertainment is here as well. So I'm going to start with Tim McTague, if you don't mind. Tim, Underwrote has managed to keep the same lineup for almost 20 years, 17, 18 years, something like that. Uh, it, it, and, and you guys weathered a hiatus period in the midst of it. So what do you guys know that other bands don't? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I obviously there wasn't a lot of prep for this conversation, so I don't have a lot of like pre-booked lines, but thinking about longevity and the idea, it was really hard for me to kind of grasp that even in our own circumstance. I think we got lucky. Um, we had a massive member shift with our first singer, Dallas, leaving, which actually I've known Biggie since before Spencer was in the band. We were touring together. Mm -hmm. And when Spencer joined the band in 2003, that kind of set the tone for what Under Oath would become and what we still are. And um, yeah, that was 17 years ago. I, I think for us we had to go through a lot and be willing to fight stuff out and you have to be willing to go through a couple of rough months, couple of rough record cycles. I mean, Tim Bohr, who's also on the call was our booking agent for many years. Um, and I mean, he could probably speak to that as well, but yeah, there's so many dynamics in there and you're in a marriage with not one person, which is hard enough, but five other people in our band's case, cause we're a six member group. And you know, things started to fall apart for us as a unified unit when people had kids and people had other interests and certain guys want to go back to college. And, you know, Biggie could probably speak to that because he manages a bunch of bands, but it's like managing a group like that with so many different needs and how to service that's really difficult. And I think we've been gracious enough to have the same manager for the, this entire period. So we're really like seven dudes that have you know, know each other, know when someone's, you know, off the rails and not saying what they mean and be able to see through the lines and get to where they want to be and just have the respect to kind of work through that instead of get mad. And I think a lot of bands fall apart um, because they need everything to be a specific way. And when you have six people with 100% of an idea of a band, uh, that's 600%. And there's only 100% of the band to go around. So you have to understand your place in the orbit and the solar system of this entire unit rather than feeling like you are the earth and the sun and everything revolves around you. And I think, you know, a few of us in Under Earth over the years have all had our turn being the sun and it's fun and then it's really tumultuous. And we, we've all kind of landed on a more balanced, uh, less stressful scenario. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes it feels like compromise. Sometimes it feels like we're finally working together. Uh, but overall, I mean, 17 years in, uh, we're still touring. We're still happy to do what we do. So we're excited. Would that uh, I don't have any secret sauce, but. Would that longevity have even been possible without the early lineup changes? Did you learn from those experiences? I mean, in 2003, I was literally 20 years old. So I think we all, the first four years of the band, even before I was in the band, there was two EPs, like everyone was 14 15 16 17 and then we all kind of landed on what we were at 20. so i don't know if the member changes were necessary or just adult puberty so to speak was necessary and we just happened to be in a band while we were going through who we are as adults and leaving our houses and living on our own for the first time and dealing with roommates and dealing with conflict um 
I'm not going to say that member changes are necessary to have a successful band, but I think in our cases, the member changes that happened were necessary for us to be the band we are today, for sure. And there's other bands that start at 16 and still are the same band. I mean, I think Between the Barrier and Me, one of Biggie's bands is a great example. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I know that we played shows with them when I was literally 17. To my knowledge, at least well over half the band, if not all of the members, maybe aside from one, are still there. So every band has their own story. And, you know, you just have to be respectful. And it's like, I have three kids. I can't tour nine months a year anymore. So do you want to kick me out? Do we want to break up? Or do we want to find a compromise and maximize longevity with scarcity and making a smaller amount of time every year more special and, you know, try to create the same opportunities by working less. And, and then you find by working less, the opportunities you do do are bigger because you're not around every three months, like some bands that are always in a van, always in a bus. So we found a happy medium. Um, and I think some dudes would love to tour more if we all decided we wanted to do that. And some dudes would love to tour less, but we've all hit a compromise and all six of us run as one unit, knowing that everyone else would have it their way a little bit different if it was a sole proprietorship, but it's not. Brian, your roster at Metal Blade, I mean, first of all, the, the roster that you've got, some of those bands have been on uh, working with you for decades. Uh, what has been your role or what has Metal Blade's role been in retaining that kind of longevity for your uh, for, for the bands on your roster? And then do you guys have any influence in the internal mechanics that we are talking about here, like with an example like Underworld? Yeah, I mean, I think Timothy makes a lot of great points about what it's like to be in a band and, and the decisions you have to make as, as a group to, to continue on to do this for a long period of time. And clearly, you know, you need to have everybody on the same page as much as humanly possible for that to happen. And, you know, our role as, as the label is, you know, we just try to be as kind of making it a, a, as safe a home as we can for the band so that they feel comfortable and if they have any problems or issues, we can help them as best we can and just make it a, a fun a fun place to be around. I mean, look, we're all fans of, of the music, you know, everybody that's involved in this business is. So we're all kind of on the same page in that regards. And, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's, you know, we've got some bands that have started out with us that obviously have been their, their whole career, you know, for 25, 30 years, I've been doing this 38 years. It's kind of crazy to say that, but, uh, and I don't know there's a real secret to it other than, like I said, I think we, we try to do things the right way. We try to have a really good relationship with the bands. I mean, most of these guys are, are very good personal friends of, of mine and, and other people at the label. And, and like I said, just we, our job is to kind of have that foundation there where, where our job is to just make them comfortable and, and make them happy as much as we can. And, uh, and usually that pretty, pretty works pretty well. And then it, it's also the component of working with the other people around, the managers, the, 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 uh, the booking agents, the lawyers, all those people. Because, you know, my analogy is always, if you have a car has four wheels, if all four wheels are going in the same direction, that car is going to go pretty fast. If one of them isn't working, it's not going to go at all. So you know, we try to just work with everybody else in and around the band to make that side of things good for the band because that's also another thing. If if they're happy with everything else, it makes them happier. So it's just a lot of a lot of different ways to do it. And every band's different. You know, there's a different dy dynamic in every band. You know, I, like I said, I think Tim made some some really great points about how what it is like to be in a band and what it what it takes to work and that kind of foundation i think is pretty similar to to most bands for sure 